private sector and not its manager. The government must stay away, stay out of the way, and let the private sector excel, doing the right thing, the bad things that they are good at. They're saying that the economy of the country is growing very fast, but the government is sleeping. So when there's no interference, there is no heavy regulation, so on and so forth, you, the private sector, can move very fast in doing your business. Can what government? Hear that? Know that? So we are in the process of reforming various area in Cambodia to provide the environment conducive for attracting more foreign direct investment to the country to create jobs, more jobs, a better job for our people in Cambodia. We need to look to improve trade facilitation in order to make life easy for exporters to export our goods, our produce from Cambodia to the world market. If the world government consider the private sector as an engine of our economic growth, in our economic growth, so we work very close, close together with the private sector. But not just ability, microeconomic ability, investment incentives, infrastructure, logistics costs, trade facilitation are some of the key elements that the investor look before they decide to invest in a particular country. Cambodia doing great in all of those fronts except the political environment. Uh, I, I might not go into detail on that political environment. But other than that, we provide macroeconomic stability. Our GDP has been growing at, at, at the rate of 8% per year the last decade. The inflation has been low, less than 5%. Exchange rate has been very stable the last 10 years. Our debt to GDP ratio is less than 30%. This number, if you compare debt to GDP ratio in other countries, US, Japan, European country, those numbers reach over 200%. Over 200%. Greece, 170%. Japan, 200%, but the Korea is less than 30%. Every country owes something to someone. Tell me which country in the world, there's one country in the world. Only one country in the world that does not take debt. Please tell me which country. Which country? China, that's wrong. Next, which country? Only one country that does not owe anybody's money. Brunei! Hey! 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 Look at it. Only one country in the world, Brunei, that does not owe any money, but the rest owe each other money. But our debt is less than 30% of our GDP. That's very good. The World Bank IMF set the threshold of 40%, but we less than 40%. So they make me manage our debt well huh? Our budget deficit is low. Our trade deficit is low. So the environment, the environment that provides the macroeconomic stability to the investor is there. So that good macroeconomic stability. They look for investment incentives. What do you offer me 
for me to do the best thing in Kiburia. So our investment law provides the most generous incentive in the region. Our corporate income tax is only 20%, the lowest in ASEAN. Hong Kong, 17 plus percent, but after that, Cambodia, 20 percent. We provide up to nine years tax holiday, duty exemption, when you bring your raw material into the country to produce the good and sell outside the country. No discrimination between a foreign investor and a local investor. No price control. No nationalization of the investment in the country. No exchange control is important for the investor to know that people here do not have exchange control. So these are the incentives that we provide to the investor for them to invest in the country. Why am I telling all this to you? I'm telling all this to you for you to know that these are the, one of the elements to attract FBI to the country. And when we attract FBI to the country, they set up the operation here, the factory, create a job, create jobs, many jobs for our people. And now you can see we have various investors come from Europe, from America, China, Korea. Lately we see more and more from Japan. Mini bear. Most of the iPhone they use today, the iPhone, the backlight of iPhone in the world, made in our factory here, Mini bear in Phnom Penh Special Economic Zone. That just to let you know that is a real, real, real situation. Okay? Most of all, iPhone backlight. Okay? So we are trying to wipe the eye, get more job, and then we get our school, get a job to go to, or you want to set up your own investment, that you understand the investment incentives. Infrastructure is important. If you do not have a good infrastructure to improve the connectivity between the capital city and 24 provinces of Cambodia, or between Cambodia and Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and the world, no one will put the investment in the country. In this regard, the Royal Bank of Cambodia has jointly with the private sector has been investing heavily to improve the infrastructure in our country. You see more road being built, new airport being upgraded in Siem Reap, in Tong Kheng, Silvio, Phnom Penh, Seaport of Sinovia has been expanded to a common larger ship. Phnom Penh, we built a new tail port in Gilswai. Power plant, we build a power plant on a BOT basis, hydro power plant, coal fire power plant, irrigation, telecom sector, we install fiber optic across the country to improve, to improve the intermediate information, communication, technology in our country. So infrastructure is a bit impressive. We build some building to ensure that we can lower the cost of shipping our goods outside of the border or within the country itself. So we have good macro responsibility. We have good business uh, investment incentives. We have good infrastructure. Trade facilitation. If the exporter has a problem, go out there with custom, with gun control, with aim some of the way, it's not going to make Cambodia a better place to do business. And that's why we are doing all we can today, various reform, to ensure that all unnecessary stuff get removed, get removed. A while ago, I mentioned to you that we work very closely with the private sector. We set up non technical working group co chaired by the private sector and the minister 
of the Tibetan government to discuss, to resolve issues related to or concern of the private sector. We have taken a working group on banking, taken a working group on agriculture, on tourism, infrastructure, so on and so forth. Nine when they cannot resolve the issues in the technical working group, they can escalate that issues, that concern in what we call the government private private sector forum. This year on March the 4th, our Prime Minister will organize that again. But we invite all the Cabinet Minister of Cambodia to attend this forum. We have invited about 200 private sector participants to join us. We have invited Diplomatic Corps, AMF, World Bank, ADB, NGO. And this forum is broadcast live across all TV channels in Cambodia. At that forum, the private sector can raise issue to our Prime Minister. A decision that taken at the time is considered the cabinet decision of the Royal Government of Cambodia. IFC, International Fight Cooperation of the World Bank, have organized 24 government private sector forum to, around the world. 24 in the world they have organized this. Now let me ask you. Out of 24, they did a survey. They did a survey to see which country government private sector forum is the most efficient, productive government private sector forum. Anybody know the answer? Who came first is the most productive, best government private sector forum in these 24 countries? Anybody take a guess? Anybody? Say out loud. It's Cambodia, yeah, Cambodia. Yes. That's it. We rank first as the most effective, efficient, productive government private sector forum. Now, talk about reform. We talk about trade facilitation. We at the Ministry of Commerce are in the process of a major restructuring of our ministry. We're going to change the mindset of our staff. We're going to change our organization to ensure that we are ready and can compete in 2015 when the ASEAN community is in place. We will compete and we will win. We will win. But we need to change the structure, the way we do things. So we eliminate some of the step requirement that hinder the trade. I.e., today we remove completely the certificate of origin. When you ship your goods from Cambodia to the United States, to Japan, to some other country, the country, those countries do not require the CO, certificate of origin. But we continue to require the exporter to come to the Ministry of Commerce to get this CO. After they get the certificate of origin, they throw in the trash bin because no one needs it. But we require them to do that is stopped already, affecting the second of December. Totally eliminate the CO to countries that do not require the CO. We are working to automate that. Today, the CO, the exporter will come to the Minister of Commerce, give all the information. Our people just key in, they get entry. Pass it on to all the people review it. One Secretary of State sign it. Each CEO is five pages. They sign each one, each one, each one five times. That to the US. 
Then the academic state, page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's another 5 activities. Then the stem again, the stem of the next commas, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 15 transaction, 15 activities are the CEO that no one cares. So we just have many trees that can say by not bringing the CEO that no one needs. So that's gone out the door. Finish that. Another reform. Why waiting for the fully automated system? The automated system in the future. Let's say you have a factory in Babat or a factory in Sinopil. In Patamna, you want to set the origin, see all the ship you could have a country. You do not have to come to MOC, Ministry of Commerce, here in Phnom Penh. At the factory, you key information to the system, send to us online. We review it, we press the button, that's your all go back to you. You can print wherever you want, whenever you want, as long as you pay the fees. The fee to the government, not the fee to the staff. The fee, the, the fee will go directly from your bank account to the bank account of our treasurer. So there's no human interface. So when we remove many human interface out of processes, then you can help reduce the corruption, the unofficial payment that exactly we are doing right now. We test this, we write a system now, we're going to test it, hopefully by September. It's going to be fully automated, that one. Two, while waiting for the system to be in place, we allow the exporter to come to the Ministry of Commerce with a thumbprint, all data, the PM, the Excel, in the factory. Come to the Ministry, plug it in, print the CEO, you save enough time, and pass on to our people to review it. Time is money, especially for the private sector. So we must reduce the time that we prepare this document. Second major, major reform that we're doing right now at Ministry of Commerce is to begin the process of automating company registration. Today, you want to set up a company, well, due to business, so one day you will need to set up a company. So you go to the Ministry of Commerce, say, look, I want the name Essay, for example, to be registered. Say, okay, fine, thank you very much. Come back three days from now. So three days from now, come back. You say, oh, Essay's name being taken. Get another one, please. So you turn around, turn up, get some glow. Oh, come back two days from now again. Two days from now, oh, you're taken already. Now my third day, or five days from now, a week later, get a landing. Time consuming. But this automated company registration, you sit at your own home, you just like you go to Google or go to Yahoo. I want the name, the email address, the security has another that name taken. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. You go to the system, log in system, and request the name of a company that you want to register. The company that system says yes or no. If no, then you suggest you have a name. From there, you said yes, I like that name. Everything is done. You pay the fees, you get everything done. That one world today with the full bank. So this is going to be done by the end of this year, company registration. So we're doing various reform at MOC to facilitate trade. Because you're gonna be be the owner of a factory or you work for a company that need to export the trade. Now we move to ASEAN 2015. There's no but and if of whether they have ASEAN to be ready by 2015. The answer is just ASEAN engineering will be done in 2015. Come along with ASEAN community. It's EAC, ASEAN Economic Community. 
that by December 31st, 2015, our second club community will be established. We established as a community of EAC to have a single, single market and production base for ASEAN to make ASEAN more competitive, to attract more investment to the country, to ASEAN as a whole. Cambodian government is going very hard to reform, to change the area that required in order for us to be a responsible member of ASEAN community. The question, will we be ready by 2015? I can say, yes, we will be ready by 2015. Are we embracing ASEAN community? The answer, yes, we are embracing ASEAN community. We should not fear of ASEAN community, but take advantage of ASEAN community to get more jobs, more investment into the country. For you, with a proper skill, you need skill, which I'm going to talk in a little bit. You need skill in order for you to compete. They, good people, can come to Cambodia, look for a job. You, with a proper skill, also can go to Singapore or go over there. So there's the mobility, mobility of the people is there. Bigger market. The consumer in Cambodia can enjoy a cheaper product when we have a single production base, when we remove the trade barrier, the tariff, non tariff barrier, NTV. You remove that as if it benefit approximately an additional 69 billion US dollars that from the study. Remove all that, increase yep. export, more investment. ASEAN will increase. The wealth there of ASEAN will be by 69 billion US dollars. ASEAN also signed the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement with a country, ASEAN China, ASEAN Japan, ASEAN Korea, ASEAN India, ASEAN Australia, ASEAN New Zealand. Each one will sign. But now, we combine all that called ASEAN, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, ASEAN. This ASEAN will combine, will combine the country that I mentioned to you a while ago, 10 countries from ASEAN, China, Japan, Korea, India, New Zealand, Australia. ASEAN will serve 3.4 billion people. 3.4 billion will combine GDP over 20 trillion. This is the largest, largest free trade agreement in the world. So, we need to take advantage of that. Don't try to say, look, we're not ready. We shouldn't be. There's no market gap. It's there. You like it or not, you can be there. So get ready, get real, get ready. That will lead me to education, lead me to skill and experience. Education is extremely, extremely important in our life. Extremely, extremely important. But education alone will not get you a good job. Education alone, without skill, without experience, you cannot be a successful businessman or businesswoman. You cannot be a successful leader in that organization. So, I urge you to try to skill, various skill, what we call T-shaped, T-shaped skill. Okay. Why is it T shaped? Just like a letter T. T, by that is T. So now on the top here, the horizontal line, that's what you can accumulate. 
A while ago, I walked around and I asked the student to come, which school is all I come from, come at. That always need to come think by the end. Let's say, come at. Okay, you go to school to come at. You have experience, but that you specialize. So you don't you have this line here. That the eye shape skill. But I want you to be a T-shirt skill, not eye shape skill. T-shirt, accounting, marketing, finance, engineering. You, you need to know all that. But don't forget, they want specialized skill. The middle of the T or the I skill. So I want all of you try to be a journalist. To be a journalist, not a specialist. If you want to be successful, if you want to run the operation, you need to stay above the ground. Like you fly a helicopter and look back down, then you see the whole landscape. Not in one area, like this. So I urge you, if you have the opportunity to go from one area to another sector, different division of your company, do it. Don't tell them, I'm sorry, I can't do it. An accountant never asked me to be a salesman, they asked me to be a marketer. No, no, I can't do it. Don't say that. What you say, you cannot do it, you cannot do it. But you say, yes, I can do it, then you can do it. You'd be amazed of your ability to perform. You'd be amazed of human nature to stretch, to stretch our ability. But you must set that goal high. You must stretch yourself high. That time you succeed. That time you succeed. Don't shoot for something, you know. Raise the bar. If you can jump one meter, it's easy to, to climb over a meter and jump. But a meter and a half, and try that. If you fail, maybe a meter forty-nine, you can pass. So set the bar high. And go objective, clearly defined, clearly defined the goal of your objectives. And measure that, measure that goal and that objective that you set. No measurement, nothing get done. Okay? So they are saying that what get measured, get done. Like a student, you, you're in school today, but if there's no measurement to give you a grade, a, B, C, D, or F. I don't think that you study, right? Because there's no grade, but by major you, or by major employee, they perform. Get a goal, an objective. Clearly defined. What they call the who, what, when. Who doing what, by when. That, you need to monitor that all the time. All the time. Two, to be successful in a business, you're going to be in a business, you need to hire the right people. You cannot do it alone. You cannot. So, when you look for people to hire, I suggest, I suggest that you look at four E's. Four E's. Okay? Letter E. That people they want to hire to go for you. First E, the people that have energy. The energy that get up in the morning. Let go and get the job done. The energy that can work 100 kilometers an hour in the world of 50 kilometers an hour. So you need this, this kind of person with full energy that ready to get in the morning and go to work. That first thing. Second thing, energizer. You need to look for someone that good energy but can energize other people. Can motivate other people. Can get the staff excited about work, about crusade. Got the things done. You need the people that can energize other. Third E, edge. E-D-G, edge. Someone that can make the decision, make a tough call. As a leader, you must make that decision. Right or wrong, but you must make a call. 
life and death decision. Can be you're hiring people, you're firing people, you're promoting people, but someone that person must be able to do so. Four E. Execute. If you can all the three E, but no one execute, take the energy, the edge, and convert it to action, to resolve. So good. So you need another one. E. Execution. So these are people that you want to recruit, to hire, to work for you as the leader. In your organization, again, your business, do the business, I'll just tell you a little bit about the business. Your organization should be very simple organization. So I like you to, to remember three S's. First S, speed. Second S, simplicity. Third S, self-confidence. Speed, simplicity, self-confidence. In your organization, your structure, do a process mapping, eliminate all the unnecessary work. Process mapping, when you make things, make your task simple. That person can do with speed. And when the staff can do with speed, simple task, that person can build self-confidence. But self-confidence, in turn, can work more for your organization. Speed, simplicity, self-confidence. Self-confidence. It's important. Goal objective, I mentioned to you a while ago, you must have goal and objective. Set your career path and chase after them. Chase after that career path. There's a saying, if you do not know where you are going, any road will lead you there. You understand what I'm saying? You understand right, right there? If you do not know where you are going, any road will lead you there. For example, you can have this conference this form. You get on your motorbike, get in your car. I have no idea where you're going. So any road can lead you to wherever because you don't know where you're going. So have goal, objective, set that up and chase after that. Now allow me to really bring my life experience, my background, to share with you how did I do it. Okay, obviously come from, how did I do it? Where did this guy come from? And now we stand here as the Minister of Commerce of Cambodia. Where did it come from? I was born in Gok Tong. I'm a farm boy in Gok Tong. Live with my grandparents. My parents migrated to Phnom Penh, but I would stay in Gok Tong. Go to the town, go to the farm, go to school there. Then I moved to Phnom Penh to live with my family. I saw books, Sacha. I saw newspaper on the street to help my family out. Luckily, I had an opportunity to leave in 1973 to the United States to study. So I left the in 1973 with $50 in my pocket. I did not speak English. I went to the state with $50 in my pocket. Two weeks after I arrived in the US, I took a bus called Georgetown, Washington DC, and go from restaurant to restaurant look for a job. Then I got a job as a dishwasher in a restaurant. So I washed dishes every night until one o'clock. Took the bus to the apartment Cold, freezing, snowing over there. In the morning, I'm going to school, take English lesson to study. After that, I graduated and worked for General Electric, for GE. General Electric for 16 years. So when G at GE, I want to be a generalist. I don't want to be a specialist, but I told you, the T-shirt 
Keep shape still. I'm just very soon like I'm at. My background is finance, accounting. But I didn't stay in one, one place. I go from accounting, I go to sales department, I go into marketing, I go into engineering to broaden my knowledge on a T shape personal life. From there, from there, I go to GE corporate on the staff, where I go on the GE around the world, from aircraft engine to MRI to plastic to locomotive, GE capital, because I want to learn. So every three months I'm at different location of GE, also different part of the world. That I think the other people learn from other people. See, the, see how, how I track my, set my goal, I change. So now I get on my team. I get going on a team bar on top now. From overall strategy, I go to GE Capital. I want to go to GE Capital, what kind of set of banking sector, what kind of set the credit card. So now, again, more accumulation of my skill. From there, as a look, later on, you want to run big operation, you must have the international experience. So I went to Paris, to France, but again, what my career, to be a major financial planner and analysis of all the key medical system in Europe. From there, till again, I want to be a CFO of a company, a chief financial officer, move again, and got that job again. Now I come again. I need to run a bigger operation of general venture. Then I move to Thailand. I was ahead, the country manager for GE Thailand, take care of the world house of Burma. That how to plot your career. That's why I talk about it's important. Do not stay if your accountant don't stay accountant for life. Do something else, do something different. I'm not saying that it's not good, it's good, but be a journalist, be a journalist. So that's how I plot my move, my career. Now that's career in the private sector. I also was the general manager of film Sighting for the whole ASEAN operation. I run the whole operation in ASEAN as a head of Philip Sighting. Now I have the experience. And there's a call of duties for me. When I was in school, I always said to myself, one day, one day I must return to Cambodia to bring my knowledge, my education background. Also, I want to get my master from Harvard. I also want to water for my MBA in Wharton. I need to use this connection that I know, my experience, to share, to help rebuild Cambodia. So I came on April 4th, 1994, to set up CDC, Council for the Government of Cambodia. From scratch, there's no, there was no CDC. I came here. Set up from scratch with a man party of mine. Is it every gen? The same general. So I got one of the founders to set up the CDC. I helped draft the investment law in 1994. I was Secretary of State, the Ministry of Finance at the same time. So I turned back. Now people ask me, how how, how do you feel? I just more you're happier with the private sector? You satisfy more with the private sector or with the public sector or the government? A lot of questions we ask all the time when people ask me that. Now, let me, what I answer to them to this question, here have my answer. I said, look, when I go to General Electric, Vogel Phillips, I want to improve or to increase shareholder value of the people who own the stock of GE or own the stock of Phillips. 
but I do not know. I never met the shareholder. Millions, millions shareholder in general venture. But I work very hard for the stock price to go up so they benefit. I do not know them. But when I work for the government in Korea, in the public sector, my shareholders are men, women, children on the street of Cambodia. I work for them. I work for you. You are my shareholder. The reason for me to be here is there just that to serve the country, serve you. Hopefully, can expand more trade. Attract more investment, get a job for all of you. That why I decided to come back. Decided to come back to Cambodia to lend a hand to the country, to share my experience for our country. You can do it too. You are the future leader of our country. We need you. We need you. So please, consider one day, if you go to private sector, it's good. Go to private sector, get some experience first, then return to give a hand to our country, to build our country, to make the life, the standard living of our people better. They suffer long enough. We should not allow we should not allow our people to suffer more than that. We must work hard to improve the standard of living. We must work hard to make a job, better job for our people. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. So I'm coming on you to please join me. Join us. Join the government one day. Come up with your new ideas. You wait your thing to lift this country up, to lift Cambodia up. We want Cambodian people to be happy. We want our country to be respected. Today, lately, the last few weeks, our reputation, our image, Cambodian brand has been suffering. Newspaper didn't write too many good animals out of, 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 of Cambodia. This is not what we want. We want people to think Cambodia is the pearl of Asia. The pearl of Asia that they write, learn and like to come to visit. In the early 60s, when the country around the nation is at war, everybody came to want to enjoy, to rest, to relax. We want to bring it back the spirit of Cambodia. The Pearl of Asia, the best city, and the European city in Rome in Asia. But we cannot do it alone. We need the private sector. We need the NGO. We need our foreign partners. We need our people. We need our students. We need our youth together. I'm absolutely convinced. Together with our determination, our commitment, our devotion to our nation, Cambodia will have a better and brighter future very soon. Thank you very much. So please follow us at the Digital Commerce. We have our own Facebook page www.facebook.com slash moc.gov.th You will see our activities, my meetings, my trip overseas, meet various people, attract FBI, all there. It's all transparent. We do not hide anything at all. So please join us on our Facebook. Let us know. If we don't do anything right, let us know. We will take your comments, your suggestion to improve our work, to improve our work. We cannot do it alone.
I'm, I'm very happy, I'm excited to be here this morning. You can see in me, do I? Did I energize you? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Alright. Can I motivate you this morning? Yes. Hey, Isaac! What's up? Thank you very much.